Just to set the scene very, very quickly indeed, uh, digital collaboration is our theme today. Uh, we want to tell you how important it is, we want to explain what it is, we want above all to share the benefits of it and to encourage and enthuse you uh, to do more of it if you're not doing any at the moment to take it up. Uh, new technologies are not just for youngsters, they're not just for individuals. Uh, all the social media now available and being developed need to be exploited by businesses across the whole of Wales, across other regions, uh, if you're to get the benefits and advantages and remain competitive. So that's what our main theme is about today. Uh, it's about not getting left behind. Um, and there's always a risk of that, of course. Uh, there's a role and opportunity for everybody, no matter what you do and which sector you come from. Uh, academics need to research and explore the new technologies. We need gurus, technologists and the like to develop new applications and platforms. And above all, we need businesses, both large and small, uh, to exploit these technologies for competitive advantage, through which our other policy goals uh, can be met in terms of job creation, uh, wealth, uh, quality of life and inclusion. So there are great opportunities and uh, our speakers are going to share their experience with you uh, and let you know uh, much more about it. We're also going to present the results of the DLAN project, which is funded uh, through the Interreg program of the European Union. It's been working on digital collaboration. Uh, and from that project, as well as from Wales itself, you're going to hear about a number of case studies of digital collaboration uh, taking place. Uh, we're going to look from the DLAN point of view after lunch in particular at its impacts on regional policy and the role of regional policy to get some feedback we hope from you on some of the outputs, the documents, uh, to disseminate in particular the good practice guide that the project has made available and the toolkit that will be online as from tomorrow where you can download various uh, parts of it or all of it. Uh, as I said, we want to enthuse you, uh, we hope to inspire you uh, with what is done and said today uh, and that you go away from this meeting uh, full of ideas uh, and a commitment uh, to undertake more digital collaboration uh, for your benefit and that of your partners uh, in the future. It helps you to reach new markets, it can help you to reduce costs, to find new partners uh, and of course to develop new products and services. Uh, today is going to be about sharing with you some practical knowledge and experience on how you can achieve that. Before I go any further and elaborate on this comments, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, David Warrender. David is the Deputy Director for Digital Wales and ICT in the Welsh Government. He joined the Welsh Government in 2007 and drives forward the digital agenda in Wales. Uh, before joining the Welsh Government, he worked for 10 years at Accenture, the global management consulting organisation where he was a partner focusing on supporting businesses in the communications and high-tech sectors. He worked internationally with major clients such as Vodafone, O2 and Orange with responsibility for both defining and leading strategic change programmes for these clients. So David, the stage is yours. Thank you, Gareth, and uh, good morning. Good morning. Oh, got to have a better attempt at that. Shall we have, a, have a one, one more go? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I was just reflecting, actually, the um, the last time I attended an event uh, in this location, it was uh, I was uh, sat, sat there watching uh, the Astronomer Royale, um, so you know the kind of Queen's appointment, uh, the, the, the Royal Astronomer. Uh, and it was quite a mind-blowing presentation. Um, but the single uh, fact that I can remember from that presentation uh, is that the world uh, will end in roughly six billion years' time. So uh, just bear that one in mind. I think, I think we've got plenty of, uh, plenty of time today. Uh, quick, um, can I do a quick demographic check in terms of the audience? How many uh, people here are representing the public sector today? Quick show of hands. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, how many from academia? Okay, a few. Uh, businesses? Ah, oh, very good. Okay. Uh, and how many do we have from um, outside of the UK? Okay, so uh, a, a reasonable uh, spread. And I think part of the reason for doing that is uh, just to demonstrate later when you have an opportunity to do some networking that uh, there's quite a diverse um, group of people that we have uh, here today. I guess probably about, um, rough estimate, 130, 140 people, I would, uh, would say. Um, I met yesterday with some of the partners of the project, so um, many thanks to uh, some of our uh, European colleagues from Czech Republic, uh, Lithuania, Spain, uh, and Italy. Um, and also thanks very much, is always a word for the sponsors, uh, so our funding colleagues uh, from Lille. Um, so, uh, we've got um, a beautiful venue. Uh, the weather is okay. Some, some beautiful people, a couple of exceptions. Uh, and uh, really a very simple objective for the day. So the day is really about um, understanding more about the opportunities of digital collaboration and what it means for your situation. So I hope you'll go away um, today with um, that objective fulfilled. Um, I wanted to um, just share uh, a kind of metaphor for the day. So do we all recognize who that is? Um, yeah, go on, someone. Okay, that's good. Okay, winning European uh, Ryder Cup team from uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and I think really a metaphor for the day. Um, you know, economic times uh, are pretty tough. Um, you know, and these guys were uh, quite down and out for a while during that competition. Um, lots of individuals, but uh, a common goal. Uh, some superstars in that team and some uh, relatively more junior. Um, but with a common objective and ultimately leading to uh, success. And I suppose, you know, my perspective is that regardless of uh, the size of your organization, whether you're large or small, if you can collaborate, if you can reach out to European partners, if you can agree a common goal, then there are opportunities, there are new buyers, new partnerships to be formed, uh, and ultimately some success will come of that. Um, I do want to make it clear that I'm not endorsing uh, the wearing of the jackets uh, as, a, as a government policy, um, not necessarily. Uh, we've got some challenges in Wales. Um, we have challenges consistent with other regions across uh, Europe uh, and, and further afield. Uh, we have challenges around our broadband infrastructure. We've got challenges around um, skills. We've got challenges around online public services. But we do have um, a number of solutions, a number of things that we're taking forward in that regard. Um, and in particular, um, you know, one of those interventions is the DLAN project that you'll hear about uh, later today. Uh, and that's one of the projects, I think, where we can develop some learning uh, and we can try and improve some of those challenges that we, uh, we all face. Uh, really, it's government's role, uh, we think, to create an environment for uh, businesses to flourish. And uh, we can't solve all of the problems, but we recognize actually that in partnership, um, in collaboration, there is an opportunity to resolve. Lots of common um, issues across Europe. I chatted with European colleagues yesterday. Lithuania has a similar population uh, to Wales, three million people, um, and chatted to a colleague from the Lazio region. Uh, the city of Rome has a similar population, three million uh, people. Um, but one of the things that we do have in the UK uh, is really, um, we're a nation of digital consumers. There was a Boston Consulting Group report from 2010, uh, a fairly well-regarded report that showed the internet economy worth about 120 billion pounds. In the UK, um, it's uh, a bigger sector than healthcare, uh, than construction, and then education. And that sector um, is expected to double uh, in size by 2016. So lots of other areas having real challenge, but the internet economy in its broadest sense 
um, is one that is uh, defying that growth curve and is growing. So a great opportunity for uh, businesses to take advantage of that. Um, I'm hoping really from the day uh, that you'll take something away and maybe just take one thing. Uh, and that thing is to go out there and find um, an opportunity to collaborate and to use the digital technology available to allow that to happen uh, in a much uh, quicker uh, uh, way than was previously possible. Um, just in closing, um, I'm really keen to get some of your thoughts today uh, in terms of what, uh, what, what else you think we can do collectively. Um, we have um, a digital summit event planned for um, the 18th and 19th of March next year. Um, we want something that um, is ambitious uh, and something that allows us to address uh, lots of relevant content on the digital agenda. Um, talk to the Welsh Government colleagues, uh, give us some feedback on the kind of things that you'd like to see um, at that event um, and help us to shape together some of the policies um, that we need to make uh, our economy successful. Um, that's all I want to say, so I hope it's a productive day, and uh, thank you very much. Thanks very much indeed, David, uh, helping to set the scene, and particularly from a Welsh Government perspective. Uh, David commented on the venue that we're in today. Uh, I, I can just about better him. Uh, I was a student in this city, literally 100 yards up the road, and about 50 years ago to the day I came to a recital here by a famous Swedish tenor called Nikolai Gedda. Uh, uh, it was a time when uh, there was a whole series of international recital events here, and uh, it's not something I've forgotten. It was a tremendous occasion that uh, great and famous performers uh, would come to Cardiff and uh, we had the opportunity, even I as a student was able to afford to go to it. Um, so I'm, I'm delighted to be back. Uh, you might wonder if, you've probably done the maths now, uh, you might wonder why they're bringing out an old codger like me to act as master of ceremonies. So it's, a, it's a good question, one I've been asking myself. Uh, I could say it's because you know, I'm pretty smart at being an MC, witty, pithy, good summaries and all the rest of it, but it's, it's simply not true. Uh, they've dragged me out because I was in part responsible for the genesis and uh, the development of the DLAN project, uh, and I think they blame me for that maybe, and they're getting their own back. Uh, no, I mean joking. Um, for some 20 or so years, as I told you earlier on, I've been involved with networking around Europe, uh, concerned with promoting ICT in general at a regional level in regional policy. Uh, it goes back, in fact, to 1993, uh, when the uh, Council of Europe, uh, heads of state, met in Corfu. They always meet in nice places, don't they? Uh, and they decided that uh, it would be a good idea to develop a pilot project to try and encourage regions to develop strategies and action plans to exploit ICT. This was at a time, I remind you, uh, when the internet was barely born. Uh, Al Gore was talking about superhighways and how America was going to exploit them. And this was Europe's uh, response uh, from, in fact, Jacques Delors. How many of you remember him? Uh, anyway, the Commission, in its wisdom, uh, set up a pilot project of six regions, uh, one of which was the northwest of England, which is where I lived and worked at the time. And so I had an opportunity to engage in that process, uh, along with five other regions from elsewhere in Europe. And this was deemed something of a success. So in 1996, the Commission uh, developed uh, a wider network with a, a call, and 22 new regions joined the process, uh, including Wales. Uh, and Wales, in fact, played a pivotal role. One of the tasks of the new network was to create an association. Uh, this was known as the European Regional Information Society Association, ERISA for short. Uh, and Wales was, in fact, uh, the founding president uh, of that organization and played a key role. I want to say, uh, if you don't mind the uh, analogy, that we're all on a journey. We're all on a journey all the time. 
uh, whether in our private capacity or in our professional lives. Uh, and the thing about journeys is they take unexpected twists and turns. You don't always end up where you're meant to go. Sometimes that's good, of course, uh, sometimes not so good. Uh, but whatever happens and wherever your journey takes you, for sure the, there are some uh, fellow travellers that share the, the route or part of it with you. And that in large measure is what today is about. It, it's about finding partners, about working with partners, collaborating uh, for joint and mutual benefit. Uh, and that will be our main focus, uh, except to say, of course, that uh, we're using digital platforms increasingly to achieve that. And in fact, it's these digital technologies that enable us to do things today that we couldn't have done uh, back in 1993, for example. Uh, I, I recall well sitting on the steering committee of the northwest of England for this, this project, about 30 people from all walks of life, all sectors, uh, and at the very first meeting the chairman uh, said, uh, now then, we, we have to find a way to communicate, please put your hand up if you have an email address. And guess what, out of 35 people, only two people put their hands up. I was one, there was one other, we were both academics. Uh, that is very different today, of course, and uh, it's almost second nature now to use some of these technologies. But they're changing all the time, and unless we keep abreast of them, uh, we'll not be able to exploit them uh, to our advantage. A friend of mine, a chap called Graham Day, some of you may have heard of, uh, once said that change is a constant. Uh, and David, in his speech just now, mentioned challenges. And I think these two things, change and challenges, uh, do help us to focus uh, on where we're going in this journey and how we get there and which, which tools, which form of transport, if you like, uh, we're going to take. For sure, along the way, our partners will change. And most of the literature these days about collaboration, uh, particularly in the business world, is an increased emphasis on project working where your partners change as projects change. Nothing's forever. Uh, but of course, to be able to do that in a good way, a smart way, always to choose the best partners and to work collaboratively and closely and beneficially, uh, you do need good communication tools. I thought I ought to just say a very quick word about the role of regions. We're going to talk about ecosystems, or other people are. Uh, this is a bit of terminology, uh, digital ecosystems, I should be precise, a bit of terminology that isn't entirely always helpful, uh, but others will clarify and explain what that's all about. Um, it seems to me uh, that we should emphasize the role of the public sector to some extent, uh, ecosystems are, are mainly around uh, businesses and how they can exploit them, but the public authorities have a key role to play, uh, not just as service providers in developing solutions and meeting challenges in their own right, uh, but actually in setting the policy scene as well. And it's where uh, the IRSI initiative from 94 uh, and ERISA and all that history has been taking us. Uh, encouraging regions to develop uh, clear strategies uh, and action plans for exploiting ICT. Because if we don't work together, we don't get the full benefits. Uh, and so in Wales and in the partner regions for the DLAM project, uh, these strategies are being, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, developed uh, in any final sense, but of course these are things not to put in a drawer and forget about, but uh, things to constantly revise. And I, I know here in Wales, with the digital agenda for Wales, uh, that is an ongoing process. I ought to say just very quickly a, a word, I suppose, about European funding and interreg. Uh, these projects, in, in my personal opinion, are very important. Uh, Without these projects, I don't think we'd see the extent of collaboration, particularly at an interregional level, that we do. In particular, one of the aims, one of the spheres of support for the Interreg project is for innovation and in the knowledge economy, uh, hence the DLAN project fits that, of course. Uh, it's about developing good practice, both in terms of policy uh, uh, as well as through projects. Uh, but programs themselves, the regional uh, programs of the European Union, for example, 
involve large amounts of money, uh, and Wales, for example, is a beneficiary of these. Uh, it's very important to manage those opportunities. All of you who've ever managed a budget, and that's probably everybody in the room, will always know that 99% of your budget spends itself. You have very little uh, opportunity, discretionary opportunity, to do new things, to invest in change. Uh, European funds provide regions with such an opportunity to look to the future and develop new ideas, new markets, new partners and the like. So they need to be used efficiently and effectively and the Interreg programme uh, helps that in, in a lot of ways. The DLAN project of course is a collaboration uh, of nine partners initially from eight of the member states working on digital ecosystems sometimes called digital business ecosystems, but uh, I would prefer to use the term digital ecosystems simply because they can apply equally uh, to the public sector as well. These are about self-organizing, scalable and sustainable partnerships uh, which evolve through time, uh, as I've already explained, but using the digital environment, digital tools and digital platforms. They're about interaction, providing support to one another, cooperation and collaboration, ultimately to stimulate innovation and achieve competitiveness. A little bit of a dichotomy there, talking about collaboration and cooperation and increased competitiveness in the same breath. Uh, some wag some time ago coined the term coopetition uh, to describe this, but in actual fact, throughout our lives as individuals, but also uh, working for our organizations, we do work simultaneously uh, with people we treat one moment as a competitor and the next as a partner. So there are benefits to partnership, even when the partnership is with our competitors. Uh, ultimately, though, as I said earlier on, we are aiming uh, to achieve certain things. Uh, that will vary depending on what you do, of course, and what your organization is about. Certainly for regional authorities, uh, issues such as inclusiveness, quality of life, jobs, of course, and general prosperity are key goals and aims. We need, therefore, and the DLAN project has been about developing systems, models, tools, networks, and other structures that will support innovation and development. And this can best take place, as I've tried to indicate, within an overall policy framework. And I'd like to suggest that regions, uh, in the European sense, uh, are the best level to do this. I say in a European sense, because in Wales here, uh, they talk about Wales, of course, as a country and as a Welshman. I I understand that. Um, but if you're not from Wales, uh, you may not appreciate that point. Um, the point about regions and regional policy uh, is that regions are large enough typically to take a strategic view, to pull people together behind a strategy or policy or behind a vision at least, uh, whereas at lower levels of government uh, things become very fragmented and strategic change is difficult to bring about. At higher levels of government you find that local needs are not addressed. Uh, here in the United Kingdom uh, people will often argue in the west of England where I live or here in Wales or up in Scotland uh, that the people in government in Whitehall in London don't really understand the needs, specific needs of their region. Of course that's true and it's one of the reasons I suppose why the Scots are having a, a referendum on independence in the near future. I'd like just to finish off by uh, saying that uh, I hope today uh, we can, as I said earlier, inspire and enthuse you uh, to take forward some of the ideas. Uh, I can remember as an academic going to conferences, um, I don't think I ever learnt anything at a conference that was billed in the agenda, but actually I came away full of good ideas that uh, speakers had sparked off in my mind, so sort of serendipity uh, process almost. So I, I'm hoping whether you get it directly from what is said, uh, or at the very least indirectly uh, inspired by what is said, uh, full of ideas that you can take back to your organization uh, and uh, to improve the extent of collaboration through exploitation of ICT.